What a glorious Sabbath day it is, and I am privileged that, well, we are privileged that you have decided to come and spend part of this day in this manner, in this place. Some of you would say to yourself, well, I, I just, you know, doesn't feel like Sabbath if I don't go to church. Well, I like what was said earlier, the church is you. Okay, this building was put together many years ago so that there would be a meeting place for people who uh, choose to worship on a Sunday, right? Yeah, we have some of those. So I was just seeing if you were awake. We choose to worship on a Saturday, okay? And, and, and for some of you that might be strange uh, to be sitting here on a Saturday. Some of you are saying, oh my goodness, I, I just hope it will end soon. And um, a new battery has been put in the clock at the back. And I have other trap doors built in, so today we will be stopping sooner than we have before. So I must hurry on and tell you that Camp Cedar Falls is the best $250 we can spend for our kids. Amen. And this is from the youth director. Yes, I did that for 10 beautiful years in the state, the Buckeye state of Ohio. And as I said to some out there when I went to get these brochures, 95% uh, of the kids who went to camp gave their hearts to Jesus. Amen. And a large percentage of them ended up getting baptized, which is the outward show of a commitment, a lifelong commitment to Jesus Christ. Okay? I tried. In some respects, I feel I failed <laughs> to get the conference to understand that this was the best evangelistic money they could spend. Yeah. Problem was, those kids weren't making enough money to get the attention of the conference. I'm sorry to tell you that it's still the case but it's not going to be the case in this church. This, this, this church is committed to its kids, and if this will help your child to know Jesus better, we will send your child to camp. Okay? I'm going to say on behalf of the board, even without an email vote, I would like this to be so. It's a pittance. It's Taco Bell money. And we can do it. It's easy. It's an easy thing to do. And guess what? There's a whole bunch of kids that are also working at camp whose lives are changed by working at camp. It's one of the only two things that the Seventh-day Adventist does, church does to pay people for ministry in the summertime. Can you name the other one? Come on, you old people. Coal portering. Okay, you don't speak French, so you don't know what the word coal porter means. It means those who carry things, usually books or magazines. We have a program called MagaBook, and it's our Ellen White books in magazine form, and people go door to door and sell them for 10 bucks a piece, and they make money for school. These are the two things that we offer for people to make money in the summertime so that they can go and get a Christian education even when our Christian education is now pricing itself out of some markets. Okay? We still have a duty, and I feel it very strongly, and that's why I'm saying what I'm saying right now. I feel it very strongly that we need to raise our children in the fear of God. And this is, this is a great investment in that. So please, uh, if you have the desire to see somebody go to camp, don't keep it to yourself. Come tell me. I've already told at least three young people this morning that I would like to see them go to camp with a friend because I can tell you that part of the difficulties that kids have at camp is that they go there alone. And if you've ever felt alone in your life, then you know what I'm talking about. So we possibly will need to send kids to camp with their friends, which of course is what Jesus wants us to do as a church, right? tell other people who then tell their friends. Yeah. See? Yeah, see, he agrees. I, I'm, I like that. Thank you. That, that's more response than I've had in a long time, right? Okay. All right. Raise your hand if you've been to the chemistry class in which you learned what the following letters mean. DNA. 
Raise your hand if you know what DNA stands for. Okay, you all failed chemistry. All right, I, I get it. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Say it with me. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Now you know what DNA is. It is known as the, the helix of life. We now have been able to look at it gene by gene, chromosome by chromosome, and we know that it exists in every cell of your body. Your DNA can be extracted from one cell of a strand of your hair. That's how the police do it, isn't it? We talk about fingerprints being unique, but the most unique thing about you is your DNA. Because there is no other person on the planet, even if you are a twin, who has exactly the same DNA. So you can go away from church today saying, I learned something. And, and that's what you learned. You learned that you have a unique DNA. However, the second thing that you need to learn this morning is that you inherited it. You did not get it from a monkey. I don't care what they teach you at Northridge, Jennifer. You did not get your DNA from a monkey. Okay? If you went to Valencia High and your biology teacher says that this world is millions of years old and we are descended from apes that evolved whose DNA must have morphed somehow, I give you the mule. How do we get mules? Anyone know? A donkey and a horse. You have to do that every single time if you want a mule. Because you see, if you put a mule together with a mule, you get nothing. A mule is sterile. Two mules cannot produce another mule. If you want a mule, you have to put a donkey together with a horse every single time because they are different kinds. And God has built a trap door in the back of this whole DNA thing so that you cannot, maybe as the antediluvians once did, those are the people who lived before the flood, mix, say, a lizard with a bird. You ever thought that that might have been what the T-Rex came from? Where did he get three toes and tiny little, you know? We can only speculate how those animals came about, but they certainly don't match up with the fact that a giraffe, here's a little factoid for you, how many vertebrae does a giraffe have and is it the same number as a human? The answer is yes and yes. Yes, I don't know how many they have, but they have as many. Okay, the doctor in the house, please tell us how many vertebrae do we have? I know we have 208 bones in our body, but we have the same number of vertebrae as a giraffe. Okay? There is consistency in creation because there is the same creator. There is a DNA that has been given into the creation of God that identifies his creation. And it is the same with each one of us. We inherit our DNA from our parents. Now, I do believe that there is a picture of the, the, the most recent addition to our congregation. Uh, sometime in the next little bit, could you put up uh, the, the new Hinkle child, please? Okay, and you will all get the opportunity to decide already who does he look like the most? And is it either one of his parents? Because the possibility is that it's not even one of his parents, it could be his uncle, or his auntie, or his grandfather. Because we inherit, we inherit DNA 
from our parents. Our lot in life in this world, my friends, our lot in life on this planet is to live life with what we have been given. We don't ask for, we don't get to go to the store and choose, although that is coming soon, right? We have heard that there is work being done with gene splicing and other things that humankind is working on so that diseases can be rooted out, even in utero, that as a child develops, things can be changed. This is amazing. Wasn't, wasn't even happening when I was a kid, but now it's happening. And so there are things that we can actually prevent because of what we know about DNA. We hope very much, kids, that you understand that what you have been given is what you're going to live with. And we hope that you will go and make something of it. We hope that you will not blame us as parents because we certainly have blamed our parents haven't we come on admit it I am mean oh because my dad was mean or maybe you want to praise your parents maybe you want to say I, I, I love how I look because I look like my mom <laughs> see we can't claim that that we had anything to do with who we are because we inherited it and we have been told by God his his big commandment was go out and reproduce procreate be fruitful he said do produce more after your own kind but know this my friends as we read Matthew 25 in your hearing today, thank you, Rabes. Judgment. Judgment is coming. Think of it more as inspection. Think of it more as analysis, or as I am seeing here in Scripture, separation and categorization. And really, there's only two categories that I can see in the, in the scripture that we read today. Matthew 25, I feel, is the big exam. Verse 32, who's involved? All nations. Okay, all streams of humanity, peoples, families, societies on earth are gathered before who? What does the Bible say? The Son of Man. Jesus is speaking, by the way. This is one of his biggest discourses in the whole of Matthew's uh, 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 arrangement. And by the way, Matthew's very particular about how he has arranged everything. And this is the last one. This is the biggie. This is the one we should really, really pay atten attention to. The Son of Man, Jesus, God, Creator, Almighty God, the Savior, is sitting. He is sitting in judgment. Quick uh, factoid. I, I know Eric loves these things. When Pharaoh said to, Moses, uh, said, said to Joseph, you're going to be my right-hand man, but when we're riding in the chariot together, what are we? We're equals. Only, Pharaoh says, only when I sit in my throne will I be better or bigger or more important than you. So I want you to know that Jesus has put this in terms of ultimate judgment here. And he seats himself in the throne of judgment, which he alone is worthy to sit on. If you want proof of that, just go to Revelation chapter 5 and look at the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. He alone, my friends, can be the one to make a judgment between any human being, between any of his creatures. So if you've had those thoughts in your mind this week where you have judged your neighbor, please don't leave this place without asking God for forgiveness for blasphemy. That you would somehow have thought that it was your right to judge someone else. There is only one who is worthy and he is the one who sits down in the throne and he says 
he sits down, the Son of Man sits, and he brings all the peoples of the earth together. And a division now is going to be made between uh, the people. He's going to separate them, and in this case, he, he's going to separate them only into two kinds. On the right, you can, uh, you can hear the announcer, and on the right, the blessed of the Father. And on the left, the damned. what it is in a word the blessed and the damned all have been given life from their life giver some have had many talents didn't we read that we read the two previous stories the story of the ladies who were called to be at the wedding and then also the people who were given talents did you notice five plus five and two plus two, and then one plus. You know, it would not have been a bad thing if he put that on, uh, you know, on with the bankers. That's what the Lord says to him. You could have at least put it in the bank to get interest. But then we find out that he had a bad attitude about his, his leader. We've all been given life. We've all been given talents, even if you only have one. And all have been called, according to this particular parable, all have been called to the wedding feast of the Lamb of God. Now the scene is set. Let's see which of the humans we are. Typically, uh, typical of Jesus, I believe, he uses a metaphor that everyone can get his point. He wants his hearers to understand. But the problem with this today is I don't know any one of us who are shepherds. Or goat's herds. <laughs> okay. However, the people listening to Jesus knew the difference between sheep and goats. Sheep are sheep. Goats are goats. They have different DNA. Humanity has tried to mix these, as I've said before, and it hasn't worked. So we now know for sure. You get sheep and sheep and goat and goat, otherwise you don't get anything. So I'd say that at this point, and, and maybe you're going to disagree with me, the judgment at this point is very easy. It shouldn't be too difficult for God to do this. It's understandable. It's, it, 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 it's going to be two kinds. It's going to be one or the other. The DNA, you see, is going to be, the DNA evidence is going to be used here. And these characteristics of each of the animals will be seen. And so judgment will be easy because of the code. You either are or you are not. For whatever reason, and we could go into it much more later, but the right has the sheep on it and the left have the goats. The right are blessed, they're connected, they're in tune with the father. One might say that the sheep exhibit the characteristics of their father. They have his DNA. It's just who they are. And you, could, you could almost say it's been implanted and because of that, they do according to who they are. But they have accepted this. On the left, you have suspicious, wily, calculating, and self-centered goats. One might say that the goats are in it for themselves. Very interesting. They exhibit a different DNA. Who they are in their core is radically different as as similar as sheep and goats are, they are radically different in their DNA. Okay, so let's have a look at Jesus' audience. Who is, who is Jesus talking to? The sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. So these are the Israelites. These are the descendants of the one who was chosen. Actually, he was the second one to be chosen. That's another story. Just read it again in Genesis this afternoon. Terah, or Terah, his father, was chosen first. Just read it if you don't believe me. 
Abraham gets called to continue the journey that Tira starts. So those of us who have been on this journey and have had parents who have been on this journey, just understand if your parents didn't finish the journey, God may still be calling you to finish the journey that he asked your parents to go on. So yeah, there's some people who like to say, yes, I'm, I'm fifth generation Adventist. I don't know whether that's a badge of honor or whether we should just say, OMG, why are we still here? Harsh, harsh, I know. I'll go on. This is a nation that has been chosen. This is a nation who has, has, been, has chosen to live in close association with the Father in order to show the rest of the world, the nations of the earth, what it's like to be sons and daughters of God. That's why God called Abraham. I will bless you, and through you, I will bless the world. A Savior will come through your nation. Yes, Jesus was Jewish, born of the tribe of Judah, hence Jewish. He came at the right time, in the right tribe, with the right heritage, with the right DNA. The people that had been chosen, specially chosen, to live in a society that, that would cause, look, look at what happened when Solomon was king, would cause other queens, like the Queen of Sheba, to come to see what was going on with this place where God was in charge. Okay? That's, that, was the, that was the whole point. That was the whole point of choosing a people out of all the peoples in the earth. I mean, have, have you never asked the question, what was going on in China? They have a history that's as long as the, or longer than the people of Israel, right? So what's this whole world stuff? Because we never hear about what the Chinese are doing. Interesting. You see... God was going to get involved with a group of people so that they could be an example to the rest of the world. He was going to implant his own DNA in their hearts, in their lives, by, by how they lived. And we now know that habits from parents, parents, please listen to this because it's true. We know this in alcoholism. Your habits will be passed on to your kids. It does affect the DNA that they inherit. Ellen White called them inherited tendencies. Okay, so it's not a foregone conclusion that if your dad was a drunk, that you're going to be a drunk. But you can mess with the DNA of your children by the habits that you form. So if you're close to Jesus, if you hang on to Jesus, your children have a better chance of doing that too. Just going to tell you parents, that's the truth of it right now. And my mama, she stayed away from alcohol because her daddy was a drunk beat her for going to church on Sabbath. My brother's not been so lucky. And we're praying for him today, even. Even today. This group was to be a demonstration. A demonstration of what could occur if the DNA of the God of Heaven was implanted into a group of people who would then pass it on as a heritage to their children. That's why they were called together. And you see, Jesus is speaking to the inheritors of this whole thing, and, 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 and they're listening to him, and he's saying sheep and goats, and you know what? <laughs> they're thinking, oh, for sure, obviously we're sheep. Surprise. Maybe it's not true. Maybe, maybe you don't have that DNA. In, are you sure? Okay, so here comes Jesus' here comes Jesus' uh, test, if you like. His, his DNA test. You want to know that you are uh, possessing the DNA of the Father of lights, the eternal uh, God of all of us. If you want to know that you're part of that group that is being called in the world right now to, to be a shining light to all of those in the world who don't know God, if you, want to, if you want to know, if you want to know if you have that DNA, if you're part of this group that's listening to Jesus, which we are right now, 
Then verse 35, there's a list for you. Do you see in that list, they kept Sabbath? Do you see in that list, they were vegetarians? Do you see in that list, they believed all the doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Now don't get me wrong, okay? I just want to emphasize today what Jesus is emphasizing. Are you ready? Verse 35, you've got a list of six things. Hungry, thirsty, stranger, clothes, sick, and in prison. Jesus said, when you, when you took care of the people in those circumstances, you did that for me. The righteous, the righteous are what? Surprised! Are you surprised today to think of yourself as righteous? If you, if you put this, this test on yourself today, are you going to be surprised to find yourself to be listed with the sheep? Hence my sermon title today is Surprised to be a Sheep. Because you see, I think there's lots of people who are not church people who are doing these things, okay? And not claiming any denominational affiliation, but they're doing these things. And wonder of wonders, miracle of miracles, the God of heaven, the Father of us all is saying, yep, you're one of mine. Because I'm the one, I'm the one who puts those DNA kind of feelings, kind of actions into your heart. And when you do them, you are showing that you are my child. The sheep are surprised to find out that the stuff that they have been doing autonomically Again, sorry about the biology, but there are certain things that happen when you cut the head off a snake. Keeps wiggling, folks. Keeps wiggling. Because there are autonomic nervous reactions that continue to happen once you have severed the head of a snake. Sometimes humans too. The sheep do things autonomically because it is part of their DNA. It's just who they are. Son of Man replies, when whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. But I'm telling you, verse 41 is very different, very different, very different, but yet so similar, just like uh, a sheep is very different to a goat, yet very similar. 41. Remember, he's in 34, he has said to the sheep, Come, ye blessed of my father. In verse 41, he says, Depart! Go away! Get out of here! You're headed for a fire that is prepared for the devil and his angels. He is recognizing the characteristics of the DNA of the goats. How do we know? He gives a similar list. Hungry, thirsty, stranger, clothes, prison. And you did not help. Whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. You're headed for eternal fire, which is separation from the life giver, which is basically blotted out of existence. Please don't read this text and think that the Bible is talking about God burning some people forever and ever. It's just not what the scripture is talking about. He's talking about complete and utter separation from the life giver, which simply will mean Death, non-existence. What is, what is the response? What is the response of the people in the audience who thought that they were, were sheep and now realize that because their response was similar to the response of the goats, which is, Lord, 
When, when did we see you? Do you see the subtle difference there between the sheep and the goat's answer? It's sort of like, Lord, <laughs> you know, like if you were Justin Bieber and I would have done it for Justin. But hey, you're not Justin, so I'm not doing it for you. It's that kind of attitude. Okay? Lord, wh when did we see you? Because of course we would have done it if it was you. Do you, see, do you see the difference? They're there because they want the points. They want the points with God. And if it was God that was there, of course we'll, we'll do that for you. We'll do that for you. Chapter 26, the next chapter, verses 3 and 4, the leaders of Israel, the leaders of this group of people who thought that they were sheep, gather together in the house of the high priest to plot the death of Jesus. Can't have this guy around saying that I'm a goat, saying that I am really not the called, not the chosen. Don't care about the fact that he is showing that if you are connected genetically to your heavenly father, that you are going to just do the things that he would do automatically. We just need you out of here. We just need Jesus out of here. So I, I'm warning you, as you listen to these words, just understand that if you choose to connect yourself with the God of the universe, you will be antagonized by those who don't choose to be connected. They may be plotting to overthrow you even now. You will, the Bible says, you will face hard times. I just hope today that as, as, as you have maybe reviewed this again for the umpteenth time, the story, that, that you will take it into your heart that the very best thing that you could do if you claim to be a Christ follower is to be connected to Jesus. Amen. And that by that connection, you will be, in, you'll be instructed, your, your DNA will be connected to the, the DNA of the Father of Lights and He will be seen through you. If that is not the case, my friends, please don't leave this house of worship this house of prayer without apologizing to God, asking for his forgiveness, and then asking him to take you into his group, into the sheep, as it were, and, 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 and giving you his characteristics this week. Because I can tell you for sure the devil and his angels will try to implant their DNA into your mind this week, I guarantee. And they are going to have way, way, way more access to your mind than God will unless you take the time to listen. It's one of the ways that I sell camp. We're going to sit here in this church 52 weeks out of the year and we're going to have these moments together and I'm done now because I'm over my own time. But we're going to do this because we believe it's helpful to gather together and praise the Lord's name and to read his words. That's why I like to read a lot of scripture. But some of you are going to watch more TV this week than you will come to church in the entire year. Think about it, 52 hours, 52 Sabbaths. So I'm wanting to tell you that you are part, at this moment, you are part of a miracle. That is no less of a miracle, I believe, than the loaves and the fishes. So I'm praying that God will take the words that he has given through his word, his story, in your life, I will, I, I, I'm asking God right now that he will multiply the effect in your life and that you will you will go away so thirsty for the water of life that you will not be able to find I swear you will not be able to find it anywhere else 
Now, there's going to be lots of people going to offer you that other water. But when you say no, I've found the living water. I've found the one who loves me. I've found the one who wants to take me back into his family and wants me to be a, a, a representative of his family. When you say that to them this week, in whatever way God inspires you to say that, I pray that his kingdom will grow. That others, others will also say, I want to be a sheep. Bah, 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 bah. I, I'm proud to be a sheep. Because you know what? Sheep get eternal life. Not eternal damnation. They get eternal life. So I don't know about you, but that's like a really great deal. Okay? Some of us are old in this room, and some of us are saying, I don't want to die. I don't want to take the dirt nap yet. But I'm sure glad that when Jesus rose from the grave, he said, because I rose, you get to rise too. So no matter what happens to you this week, live or die, Jesus wants to be with you forever and ever. What do you say? Good news? Worth sharing? I think it is. I think it is. Lots of really sad people out there who don't know this. So you have been commissioned by God to go from this place and to share this good news. Amen. Amen. Amen.